할렐루야. 할렐루야. The service who receives it. If you don't do the mystery of God through, if you don't go inside Christ and give service, then the, the demons will take that. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20. And then this praise. Right now through forced repentance and through this mystery, you repent and that's why God will receive that. No matter how much you practice, the demons will take that. And that's why the, over there, the, those who are volunteering, they will receive incredible blessings later on. Why? Because God has created us to give praise, to praise Him. So today's dawn service, Matthew 11, verse 28. Those who are weary, so what's A, A, B, what's, what's above B is A. So on top, so those who are weary, and heavy laden, all come to me. This incredible word from God. So then, those who are weary and heavy laden, but passed apart, why do you only say that they, He only called in Christ? So just because those who are ready to take a test, the bar, are they all going to pass? No. Only those who pass, then they will use. So only those who are in Christ, then that's truly called. But just because they're there to take a test and everybody's there, then they're not going to be chosen. So in this today, this incredible saying that God has said to all of you, what did God say in one word? He said, in your heart, God is there. It's an incredible saying. Which religion says that God is in your heart? In your heart? There's no religion that where God is in their heart cannot happen. So then, what's the difference between real and fake church? Why did God say the mystery of Christ through the mystery of God that he, you can differentiate between right and wrong? If Christ doesn't come inside your heart, then God who is inside Christ will not come inside us. What is faith? It's becoming God's son. And how do you become God's son? We talked about it at dawn service, Galatians 3.16, 3, through the mystery of Christ. So the mystery of Christ, you become his son, and what happens? Whether you and me, whoever, you can receive God's inheritance. What do you all? What do you receive? Almighty God's. So today, the word. What is? What is it telling us in our heart? Who's there? Isn't that an incredible saying? So if God is in my, heart, how can God be in my heart? When God comes inside my heart, so God after that. Then what does he do after that? Whatever that you want to do, you, you will have that coming out of your heart. God will lead your heart. This whole universe is for you and me as a blessing God has given it to us. So he said, just love me, he said. Proverbs 8 verse 21, as long as you love him, then he will give you wealth right away. But you don't love God. Why? Because God has come inside my heart. Is God hatred or love? He's love. When God comes inside, then you'll have love coming out. So then God, that love, is it small? No, it's infinite. And that's why he says Alpha and Omega. There is no end to that love. And what does he do? He said those who receive his inheritance, those who have received all his inher inheritance, who does God give his nearest inheritance to? He comes in a heart, and then he will move a heart and those who are obedient only to his sons he gives. And today in verse 13, when, when you become my son, then I will go inside you and I'll become your God as your father in your heart and I'll be with you. So then when that happens, those with demons will come and trick you give you excuses and give you grumbling so that 1 Corinthians 3 verse 3 you belong to the flesh you're full of full of envy and jealous and you don't want God in your heart so do not do that that's what he's telling us so a car that runs really fast has a really good brake strong brakes and then when when it's needed you press on the brake so then today to you and me this almighty God comes in our heart and that's why when you go to church, it's not even though you're here, 
Even if you don't know what's going on, even though you don't know what's happening, but this lacking servant, because I know this mystery, so God is in my heart and He's with me, so that when I look at those with demons inside, so then say, Who are you that you're, you're leaving? And then it says, I am so and so. And then I ask, what did you bring to this person? And then it, it answers it, I, I brought this kind of disease. When did you come in? They say, this is when. And from that point, came to that person and gave this disease to that person. So I'm just looking. And that's why in the name of the Lord, the you and me, I'm looking at all of you and, and the demons inside of you are leaving. Why? Because God is performing His works. With that spiritual power, the demons are cast out. That's why even while you're listening to a sermon, you, you get healed. Miracles happen. And then what happens when the demons leave you? And that is why when that demons leave, Luke chapter 4, verse 35, it will take all the disease. So when the demons bring the disease and when it leaves, do you know what happens? When it leaves, then people fall over. M many things happen. So even if you fall over, you don't get hurt. All these miracles happen. Even right now, it's still happening. So when you're here for the first time, John 8, verse 47, you have demons inside, then they don't want to listen to this sermon. Why? Because demons inside, you don't want to listen. Because you don't have God, but you have demons inside. What about Pastor Park? I don't have demons inside. I'm sorry, but 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the sins coming out of your heart, Matthew 15, verse 19, or Romans 1, verse 28 through 32, where you don't want to keep God in your heart, those sins... Even if you leave those alone, where there's sin, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, demons attach itself. So demons will attach itself. Just because you take medicine or you take shots or you have operation, it's not going to get healed. It doesn't get healed. And that's why doctors and professors, and, and they continue to study. No matter how much they study and experiment, it doesn't work. And that is why when God gives you the disease, why does He give it to you? Because of your sin. That's what Psalms 103 verse 3. Because of your sin, God gives it to you and you just leave the sins alone and you want the disease to be healed. That's why you're just being foolish. So what kind of fool is that? So then sometimes I look at you and I say, oh, the, but why is that Pastor Park keeps saying cursing, say dog and pig? But God's greatest love, He said, you sons of viper, you're going to kill your parents. Oh, but God said He's love, but why does He say that? Because He's the greatest love. Your true mother, when they love their children, they say, if you don't do your homework, I'm going to hit you. I'm really going to hit you today. Other mothers can't say that to, to the kids. But even the stepmothers, no matter how much they say they love, they can't say that. But true mothers, they do say that. Even if they're not educated, they will say that. Because God loves us. Revelation 3 verse 19, He tells us. Because I love you. You have all the problems and, and I give you rebuke and I will, I will hit you. Why? So that you can repent. This is love. Because He loves us. He will rebuke us. And He will reprimand us. And that is why you and me, we don't know what God's love is. You think that sermons that are sweet to your ears? So then look at Pastor Park. The piano octaves, it's very wide. There's a high sound and there's a low sound. It doesn't, it doesn't sound very good. So then when you're doing music, do you use all those, those high and low notes? You hardly use those, right? Should we just pull that out? with a, But you need all those octaves to make it a proper piano. So you and me, God's infinite love. He has so much love that what, you don't want to keep God in your heart and you're, you're murmuring or you're actually, you have jealousy and you hate other people and you have unrighteousness, then you go outside of Christ and 100% your death sentence. First John, Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Surely he will kill you. Why does God say such scary things? Why doesn't he say, I, will, I may kill you, but why does he say, surely I will kill you? And then why doesn't he just kill me? But Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6, he says to third and fourth descendants, I will kill you. Oh, was I a betrayer? The why, why, did, why is God being so mean? Do you think it's because he hates you? No, you still 
don't want God in your heart and you continue, you want to continue to do bad things and you want to live with demons inside, that's why God, this is what God is asking. It's, it's true love. That's why when I first started reading the Bible, when I have demons inside, when I didn't know the mystery, when I was reading the Bible, I thought, oh, God is so bad. Why does he curse so much? Why does he say, you sons of viper? But after I realized, surely I will kill you, that made me cry because how much he loves me so much that because he loves me so much, that's why he says these things. It's infinite love. And that's why Luke 6, verse 26, the sermons that are sweet to yours, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that's heresy. And yet you go to those places and call them church. So when are we continuing Numbers 14, verse 11 and 12? When are you going to live like that? We cannot do that. Today, we're here to receive God in our hearts. But when you have God in your heart and you want to do well, do you know who actually hates that the most? Those who are doomed, who those with demons inside. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. Those who are doomed, they will block you, and those with demons will block you. So then when you look at our church even, those who are doomed and those with demons, there are some, of, some people like that. They, they once in a while do will, will do those things. The, the, those who are deemed and the doomed and those with demons, they will block you from receiving all that. Which is a church will lead you to heaven? God's heart is not, love is not in your heart, so how can you have love? And how can you go to the heaven? And that is why those with God in their hearts, how is their life? They don't have any complaints. Because if you belong to the flesh, then you go to hell. There is no jealousy and there is no envy. So where does grumbling start? Where does it come from? Let's look up Jude chapter 1, verse 16. Those who are worse than dogs, they grumble. This is what's recorded. Sometimes when you, for example, you say to Pastor Park, oh, he's such a dog. Those, if somebody calls you a dog and curses you, you may want to sue that person. And then you pretend like you're so smart. Oh, he, he called me this. He cursed at me. How can pastor, such a pastor say that? Bad words to me. Dog and pig? You don't want to hear that? How can you become a dog? You're like a dog. So it's, I don't understand. What is love? Love is understanding. Colossians 2 verse 2. Christ, mystery of God. If you have love, then how can how come you don't have understanding? And so then to call you dog and pig, then you just want to you want to fight and what is hurt your feelings. We're just trying to share exactly what the Bible says. God said dog pig in the Bible, and then and then you get all upset because you refer to it as dog and pig, but you yourself you yourself have turned into a dog. You don't even know that you've become a dog. And but you don't want to be called a dog? So I don't understand that. So then Jude chapter 1 verse 16. Today, if you don't want, if you have God in your heart, then complaints and you're not going to have that. So why do you have excuses and complaints in your heart? Those who, have, who grumble, they are wicked. All they want to boast about is worldly things. James chapter 4 verse 16. So this person in front of you, this pastor park, if I don't repent, then I'm a wicked person. So what did I do in the, in, in the past? As you know, to bars, I used to shout in bars. I, went, I, I was in Grand, Green Beret and I did all kinds of bad things. I used to have like two dynamites and then everywhere that I, I would go eat and then I said, do you want me to pay or you want me to give you this? And they say, oh, just, just leave. I, I, that's all I did. I didn't do any, anything else. How good is that? I don't know where your parents are. Do not worry. My mother prayed for me and that's why I'm a, I'm a witness. I'm a witness for that. I am the witness. Do not worry about your children. Do not worry about your husbands. They will turn out well because I turned out. So then world, so then surely so I'm here as a witness. Some people ask me, how come, did you ever get a, an award? 
When I lay down my life and, and went on special assignments, they gave me all kinds of awards. But I didn't take it because I knew about the word. I didn't take the high positions. So even me, I, can, I, I turned out well. So who, who's not going to do well? Because Almighty God will make you do well. So do not be forsaken. Anybody can do well. Anybody. Amen. Does it end with that? You love so much. The 10,000 problems are related to money. So this person standing before you, when I still, even now when I pray, all that is given to me. God, I pray, God, I will use it this way. If it's right, then God will give it to me right away. But if I'm wrong, then God will tell me, that's the wrong reason, so I'm not going to give you. So then it gets laid, delayed, but it always, always he answers the prayers. There's so much in front of you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. All that that you need has been prepared for you in front of you. What, you want to go to heaven? Then God will bless you on earth too. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. And that's why today you're here. It's not just to give service one hour, two hour to God. Amen. Amen. That's not the only reason. When you say Amen, then you're saying, I am truly, yes, I am God's son. He is the greatest God. I am your, your child. I, we're here to receive this blessing. Amen. All your wishes will come true. That's what, that's why this lacking servant, according to the word, as much as you love him, you receive wealth. Proverbs 8, verse 21. So then God's love is infinite. So then in the infinite, you, you son of viper, you will, I will kill you. That's what Father said, all of that in between. So you have to do as much as of that so that your piano octave will be wide. Let's all receive this blessing. We're here to receive this blessing. Amen. All your wishes will come true and your children will do better. How precious is his promise? Which religion says that God will come inside your heart? So then how do you have him come inside your heart? And what happens when he comes? It's incredible. So when God comes in, before he comes in your heart, then we have to get rid of resentment and grumbling so that, the, so that you're not worse than a dog. So let's read Jude chapter 1 verse 16. Do you know where Jude is? We're not talking about it's, it's at the very end, right before Revelations. Let's read together. Verses 16, 17, 18. Ready? Go. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their lusts, and their mouth speaks great swelling words, showing respect of persons for the sake of advantage. But ye, beloved, remember ye the words which have been spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they said to you, In the last time there shall be mockers, walking after their own ungodly lusts. Amen. Talks about mockers here. We're not talking about any candy. We're talking about those who are worse than dogs, these mockers. Is that what mockers mean? Job chapter 30, verse 1, that's recorded there. So what did God say? What, did you grumble? Did you complain? Why you have excuses and you're, and you're murmuring behind other people's backs and you're only boasting about yourself? James chapter 4 verse 16. No matter what boasting you have, it's all wicked. Then you're going to receive calamity. Is that what you're just boasting about? What are you doing right now? The prophets in the Bible, what did they say? Are you what? You're laughing at that? That is why you're a mocker. You're worse than a dog. This is the word of God. So if you don't know that, let's look up Job chapter 30, verse 1. All of you, you have to be thankful in all things. Whose will is that? First Thessalonians 5, 5, verse 18. Why don't you have thanksgiving? How come you're not thanks? How come you're not thankful? If you're not thankful, do you go to heaven or hell? You want to go to heaven? Then without thanksgiving, giving service, that's 100% hell. I didn't make that up. It's Psalms 50, verse 23. That's the word of God. Here, the people who are resentful, those who have excuses, and they're, they're 
grumbling around other people's back, they don't have thanksgiving. Which path are you walking on right now? It's a path of blessings or a path of calamity? Which way are you going? So today here, who are the mockers? It's those with grumbling and those with resentment. And they are boasting about worldly things. And they laugh at the word of God. It's those who are mockers. They're worse than a dog. Let's look up Job chapter 30, verse 1. Ready, go. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I disdain to set with the dogs of my flock. Amen. So they're worse than dogs that keep the flock. They're the mockers. But you're a dog yourself? And when people call you dog, do you want to fight with them? But they, but you, and yet you act like dogs. Not only that, Second Peter two verse twenty two. What does it say? If you're outside of Christ, then you're a dog and pig. God has recorded it. So you're a do- so then when people call you dog or people call you pig, that you don't want to hear it. But you actually are a dog and pig, and you're you're living that life. So here today, if you're resentful, if it'll be fine if you just end it with yourself but no you and your dog your children are worse than dogs that's what god has recorded not only that but those who have gods in in their heart they're not like that so why do you have complaints and why do you have resentment why do you talk behind people's dog why why are you murmurs what god said surely you'll face a death sentence and then not only that but you're full of envy let's look at first corinthians 3 verse 3 if you have jealousy, then you belong to the flesh. Surely you're going to hell. Why do you want to live like that? If you don't want, if you want, if you want God in your heart, if you have God in your heart, then you won't, you won't have resentment and you won't have jealousy. Why? Because nothing, you're not going to lack anything because Almighty God will not, what, do you think that you're going to, you're going to lose something? That's why God said to believe in Him? No. So even, even the shamans, they all talk about God. Why do they all refer to God? This God. If He's truly God, who is my helper? When can I have that relationship with God? Only through the mystery of God. Force your repentance. Otherwise, where, does God, where is God? God, mystery of God. Force your repentance in Christ. That's where He is. And that's why if you don't do force your repentance, they talk about Almighty God. What, are they crazy? Are they Shermans? Only his sons can call him God. Only his sons. How do you become his sons? We talked about it at dawn service. Mystery of God only through forced repentance. Galatians 3 verse 16. And that's why you and me, what? The sickness isn't, you're not being healed? That you're not happy? Right now, God said that he will give you happiness right now but the happiness isn't in you and you're not joyful and you're not happy and that because if you're joyful then all your wishes will come true but nothing's working out and you and your spouse have a bad relationship your business isn't isn't doing well your children are giving you heartache oh my gosh there's so many branches sure there's so many so many branches so why should you have more but i have so much envy coming out and I and, and so, so many arguments that 100% going to hell, Romans 8, verse 13. So let's read 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3. Where, where does envy come from? Ready, go. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you jealousy and strife, are ye not carnal, and do ye not walk after the manner of men? Amen. So here we're talking about jealousy and strife. And those who want to have arguments, you have demons inside, then God is, it will not be in your heart. So then in you, you have demons inside. This is what God is telling us. So if you just, if you argue, but you're not arguing, but you're just standing next to people who are arguing, but do you go to heaven still? No. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. Let's look that up. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. 100% you go to hell. But you, even though you're just a bystander, you listen to the arguments, it's 100% going to hell. Second Timothy 2 verse 14. God said to 
strongly let them know. But you're still living like that. Even those who listen into the argument, they're all doomed. That is why when I ask you, what, one, two people have demons inside and they are full of complaints and they have resentful and that they're not giving thank, thankfulness. Oh, but so together, even though we have clean water, but he's a little bit of dung, but, but let's all be together. But just like, but do we want to be separated? We want to go to heaven. We have to go to heaven. We have to save our descendants. We have to, we have to live. Because if you leave those people alone, then you will die together. So when you have a lot of flowers in the bathtub, and in the bathtub, you put a lot of good things in there, and then you put one thing of dung, dog, dung, dung in there, what, what good are all the flowers going to do? It's just like that. That water, no matter how clean that was, but if you have the poop in there, you cannot drink it. That kind of church is not a true church. Jesus Christ is the head, and Jesus Christ is the body of the church. So then in the, in the hand of Jesus Christ, he will separate between good and bad. That's why we cannot have the chaff in our, in our church. In, Jesus has shown to us, John chapter 6, and that's why there's so many people who are followers and healed all the sick, sick people and, and chased away all the demons. There were tens of thousands of, of disciples or followers, but Jesus chased all, the, all of them. And only 12 disciples were left. Let's all receive this. Be part of that 12 disciples so that we can all receive answers. So those who belong to the flesh, they're full of jealousy and strife. So God hates that. Second Timothy, second, second Timothy 2 verse 14. Of these things put them in re remembrance, charging them in the sight of the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit to the subverting of them that hear. Amen. There's nothing, no profit. There's no profit at all. Even if you listen to the arguments, when you're listening, does it say you live or you die? There is no profit. So even if they argue, but how about the church that is separated after arguing? How about those dissent? How about those divisions and those denominations? Do you think they'll be okay? Even if you argue, so then what happens when you have divisions? That's hundred percent. So the word of God said, even if you argue, even those who listen on their doom, and there's no prophet, but he said, charge them accordingly. But if you listen, and you, and if you argue, and then you become enemies, and then you separate and become different divisions, what happens? Romans chapter 2, verse 8. They don't follow the truth, 100% demons. So our church... If we want to have all kinds of garbage here and, and we want to be like a fake church, no, we cannot be like that. God is just God. Even if one person here, there's only one person, even he has to go to heaven. Everybody that comes here has to become God's son. And we all have to receive our blessings according to our wishes and pass it down, down to our descendants. And that's why we're here today. I too am he's standing here to be like that. Why? Because of this precious promise. Romans 2 verse 8. Ready? Go. But unto them that are factious and obey not the truth, but obey unrighteousness, shall be wrath and in indignation. Amen. See here, those who argue and those who listen, they have no profit. That's why God said, do not argue, do not have strife. But then here they have strife after strife, and then they separate and they have denominations. Do they listen to 66 six books of the, the truth? So they don't even listen to the truth? How can they go to heaven? Which Bible says that there's salvation? So all of you went to those fake places. How much have you tormented God? That's Isaiah 43, verse 24. Did you repent that? You have tormented your parents, and then did you not ask? Did you did you not say sorry to your parents? Is that a true church? The body and the head, mystery of Christ, mystery of God. That is only that is a church. Ephesians one verse twenty two and twenty three. 
So if you mock, if you mock the truth, the word of God, so how can anything happen? If you don't listen to the truth, 60 books of the Bible, you have nothing to do with that. Then what? It's all full of demons. That's why God said those people have all demons inside. Jude chapter 1 verse 19. Let's look that up. Jude chapter 1 verse 19. Those with denominations, 100% they belong to the flesh. They have envious. They have envy and they have strife. 100% they will die. Not only that, they will not receive the Holy Spirit. But there's so many in the world, worldly churches, fake churches, they have denominations that don't even follow the truth, the word, and that they say, they, we receive the Holy Spirit. If you don't go in Christ through the mystery of God, and you don't even become one with yourself. So then, oh, I wonder if they're doing forced repentance over there. No, they're just saying, let's all try to become one in all they talk about. Sure, I did a lot of um, sports when I was younger. I tried it all. And I realized that I wasn't going to survive. What will, what will save us? What? Exercise? Or foundations? Or... Why are there different types of philosophy, different beliefs. What's all over there? It's all, it's all full of, actually, if you go to the beach, it's all, it's all little pieces. They don't become one. But if the cement is, makes it, if cement goes in, it becomes one, just like Mr. Christ. Let's all receive this blessing. I have two faced and I cannot even correct it on my own. Should I do this or should I do that? How can you? Become one with one heart. Without, if you become, if you have Holy Spirit, you become one. If you go inside Christ, you become one. This is the only way for us to become one. That's why this is the only way to become one. Amen. Jude chapter one verse nineteen. Ready? Go. These are they who make separation sensual, have not the Spirit. Amen. They have denom denominations. They don't follow the truth. They have arguments and they have denominations. They have divisions. That's Proverbs 18, verse 1 and 2. And then they separated. They have no profit there. And they're all going to be doomed. And how can they do well? So why do you want to go to those places? And you've tormented God and you don't even repent that. And you come here and you expect to receive blessings. God is, you need to resent. You need to actually erase all that. As long as you have sin, you're not going to. Isaiah 59, verse 1, 2, 3. God said, when you have sinned, God can help you. The moment you're listening to this word of God, ask God for forgiveness for tormenting him. Then you will be healed of your sickness. You will have joy. You will have wealth. Your children will do well. You'll go to heaven. Let us all receive this blessing. So you and me, today, when God comes inside my heart, then do you have complaints and and then you will not become like a dog and a pig. Then we'll become God's sons. That's why our life, do you want to become God's son or do you want to become a dog? It's one or the other. And that we want to become God's son. And what happens when you... Romans 8 verse 14, you will not go to hell. Today, Jude chapter 1 verse 19, we're talking about separations and they have divisions, denominations, they argue. Even if you listen on to argue, then you'll go to hell. But if you have denominations, you've separated, 100% you'll go to hell. That's so why you belong to the flesh and they're full of, they're full of jealousy and strife. And there's no Holy Spirit. Always they have demons. Those who have demons, I mean, those who have Holy Spirit, you can tell right away. How do you know? They will volunteer and they will work. When you have Philippians 3 verse 3, when you have the Holy Spirit, you will volunteer and do good works. If you have, check if you have demons inside or not. If you want to do, if you want to do volunteer work for good work, then you have demons, you have the Holy Spirit inside you, but you don't want to do that, that means you have demons. But sometimes you fool yourself thinking you're not like that. But if you want to become a pastor, because of 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, because of love for money, there's 10,000 wickedness so what is wickedness and what is good 
How do you tell the difference? So today, God is telling us, right now inside you, if God is inside you, God, when does it come inside your heart? So you don't know the difference between right and good and, and, and evil. What is good and what is evil? Today, to you and me, outside of Christ is all wickedness. I think you don't really know the difference. Let's look up the Bible. Outside of Christ is all wickedness. And in Christ, everything in Christ is good. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. We don't have time, so we're actually skipping some verses. But, but we have covered enough where you can live. So today, no matter what employment you have or what business you have, just receive it with thanksgiving. Be, because of your pride, if you don't receive that, but because of that sin all your life, you're going to suffer and you're going to go to hell. And your children too cannot get away from that. That's Micah chapter 6 verse 9. And that's why all of you right now, you want to do something, you want to look for something and it doesn't work, just do that, what is given to you. If you're, if you're diligent, then God will have you graduate from that and you will do well and your children will do well. Let's all live correctly. So you and inside us, God, only in Christ. Let's read together. Having a good conscience that wherein you are spoken against, they may be put to shame who revile your good manner of life in Christ. Amen. So only in Christ there is goodness. And that's what Mr. God forced repentance. You have to do that to be good. So then you don't do this, and then you don't know that you're, you're evil. Many people, they go to church, and they don't know whether they're good or evil. So only through forced repentance, why is it that you say amen and to become God's son? Because that is good, that's why. So whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Galatians 6 verse 7, you have to reap good, you have to sow goodness so that you can reap good things. So then when you do forced repentance, the demons, they will actually revile you. Only those who do good things, they will revile. Those who are with demons inside denominations, they say they revile us. So then, so then you, you tell them, do not say bad things. But they have denominations that 100% going to hell. They're not being obedient to the, the truth. Where is good and where is evil? In Christ is good and outside of Christ is evil. So let's read it one more time. This is where life, your life matters, whether you can go to heaven or not, whether you're going, to be, you're going to be healed or not, whether you're going to become God's son or not, whether you're going to receive wealth or not, and whether we're going to change your destiny. It's all be, it all belong, it all, it, the reason is here. We have to save us and save our children. Let's all receive this blessing today. This is the only way. Let's read it one more time. Having a good conscience that wherein you are spoken against, they may be put to shame who revile your good manner of life in Christ. Amen. So only in Christ is good, and outside of Christ is all wickedness. So then this evil, what happens? So what happens if you have wickedness? Let's look up Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3. If you have wickedness, if you have evil, then you, you become crazy. And that's why if you go out of Christ, that you have this kind of thought, then you're already out of, out of Christ. You're crazy. Oh, my! I have this theory. Two times two is four. Then you're already crazy. So then if you don't want to keep God in your heart, then you're already outside of Christ. You're crazy. When you have God in your heart, that Almighty God, that Father blessings in your heart, and you become His Son, and you have God in your heart, then all your wishes will come true. This person standing before you. Which country that I've been to, it doesn't work. What, what is the poorest country? Africa? Even when I went there, I received so many blessings. Wherever I go, God, when He performs His miracle, they bring everything good that they have. So that's why I told you about what happened in Africa. When I went there, that pastor said, Oh, in our church, we've had so many revivals. So our congregant, congregants, they don't even have cuttlefish. No more than two, two cuttlefish. And they've already given all, all everything that they, all the jewelry and everything they have, all they have left is two cuttlefish. The cuttlefish there, the octopus there is bigger than the fan. It's like when you hold it up, it's taller than our, our height. That's like the most delicious 
is in the catch in Las Palmas. So then in my heart I said, that pastor is full of lies. Okay, so tonight, when let's see what happens when the revival starts. Let's find out whether there's only two pieces of cuttlefish left. So I pray to God, Father, you, you heard what he said. That pastor is full of lies. Let's find out whether that's he's telling the truth or not. Father, you know, please perform your miracles. And, and that night when I laid my hands on all of the congregants, they were rolling around on the ground. They were crying out to the Lord. And the octopus, what? Not only two pieces, but boxes and boxes came out. And all the jewelry came out. Even now, this miracle will happen. Say, Amen. So much was came. So I brought it all to Korea. And the pastors from, North, from the States, they took boxes of the, of the octopus. The pastor said there was only two pieces of octopus. I, I don't know when, when they were dried in which time period and, and boxes came out. God is alive. God is living. If you, don't, if you didn't do it, you have to have God in your heart. God is love or hatred. Because you have to have love, so the love will come out. And when love comes out, He will give you everything. Miracles will happen today. Let's all receive this today. So outside of Christ, out of Christ is wickedness. And in Christ is goodness. And that's why Mr. God forced a repentance where there's a church that doesn't have that. Is that good or evil? They're full of evil. They're sitting together pretending. So today, God saying to you and me, if you go out of Christ, it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just end with wickedness. You'll go crazy. Let's read together. Ready? Go. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Ye also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. Amen. So all their life, they're in madness. So then they're crazy. Do they know or not? So when you do force weapon, Mr. God, if you don't do that, then you're crazy. You've gone mad with evil. So then when you pass, when you let them know the truth, is that, is that evil? No, that's love. The word of God is love. Let's read it one more time. Let's find out what is evil out, out of Christ. If you don't do force repentance, what happens? You'll, you'll live as, as in madness. You haven't gone crazy, but you will live in madness. And yet you don't know, and you, you say you go to church and you live in faith? Everybody's living in madness, and they don't, they don't know that. Does it say just anybody or everybody? Let's read it one more time. Ready, go. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Ye also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the bed, go to, go back, they go to the dead. Amen. Yeah, and then they do that, and they'll end up in hell. We can't do that. Even now in Christ, Let's all go to heaven. Let's all of our wishes come true. Future generation do better and better. We're here to receive this blessing. Amen. So please do not, re do not resent and do not grumble. And do not envy. And do not strive. Why is it that God... You cannot do that when you have God in your heart. So let's not do that. So then all of you, up until now... You had great life of faith, but if you betray Christ and you go outside and, and believe in different relation, religions, and some people say all religions are the same. Hey, you crazy. You're outside of Christ. Christ, that's why you say crazy things. Let's look up Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 10. If you leave, force your repentance, you know what happens to you after that? Even if you pray, God will not listen. And God said, do not even pray for those people. And when I see you and you, everything that I promise to give to you and your descendants, all that will be nullified. What, you went to a different religion and different, and you, you, you're you doing different religions and you say all the religions are the same? Really? Try that. Try that and see if you receive answers. No way. Almighty, 
God said other, other gods will not work. What? How can you say all the religions are the same? Then do you think that that's why God said they, 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 that you'll go crazy? Verse 10, 11, 12. Let's read together. Verse 10 and 11. Let's only read verse 10 and 11. Ready? Go. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words and they are gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant which I had made with their fathers. Therefore thus says Jehovah, Behold, I will bring evil upon them which they may, they shall not be able to escape and they shall cry unto me but I will not hearken unto them. Amen. So then, let's read verse 13, 12, verse 12 and 13. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabit inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto which they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to the shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Let's read verse 14. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me because of their trouble. Amen. So when you go to different religions and you, and you believe in different gods, no matter what other gods, there are many other gods, but God will, that they cannot, he'll help you. That's what God has said. Well, so how can you say religions are the same? Do you think that religions are the same, but God has said that other, other gods cannot help you? So today, this Almighty God, the other, other gods are not the same with Him. That's why God said, if you betray me and go somewhere, you will not receive help anywhere else. And do not even pray for those people. That's command from God. So then, so why did God say such scary things? If you, what, you think the other, other gods are the same and, and other religions are the same? You're saying such foolish things. That's why God said there are many gods. Verse 13, he says there are many gods. In verse 14, but they will not answer you. They will not give you answers. And that is why the greatest of all the gods, Lord Jehovah. Let's look up Psalms 97 verse 9. Let us all become his son so we can receive the inheritance. How have you lived up until now? What, were you a harlot up until now? What, were you the, the thief on the right hand side? You can still be blessed. So do not be, do not listen to the demons. What, you, you, you were dirty just now, but if you cleanse yourself, if you bathe yourself, you'll be clean. And if you, even if you get dirty again, and again you become a harlot, but you just have to cleanse it again. What is God telling us today? Out of Christ is all evil. So it doesn't just end there, but everybody will go live in madness. So then you don't want to hear it when I say mad, but when I say out of Christ, you say amen. Is that right? So why did God say out of Christ, God said it's all madness and that you go to hell? Just like that, if you leave Christ, it's fake among all fakes. That is why, let us, let us all go in Christ. Let us all go in Christ. Amen? So that all of our wishes will come true. How precious is this promise? So in the work, in the word, in the God's Bible, if the rebuke is not sweeter than honey, then that means that you're, then you're crooked. So when, when your mother rebuke you, if you say, oh, why is that jerk saying that to me? Then you're not a real true person. No matter what your mother says, you know that she says it out of love. True mother, you, you have to be thankful for that. And more love than your mother is God. Isaiah 49 verse 15, God said, I love you more than your mother. I love you more than your own mother. So with this love, let's change our life. Who is he? He's the greatest God among all gods. Psalms 97 verse 9. Ready, go. For thou, Jehovah, art most high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Amen. Jehovah Lord, he's the highest God of all gods. So how can you say all religions are the same? Where does it say all religions? If there's no Christ, how can that be a church? Outside of Christ, out of Christ, they're all crazy. They're all evil, they're all crazy. When they're crazy, how can they be the same as God's son who's not crazy? This is the word of God has given it to us as love. To do what? So that we can become God's sons. To do what? Galatians 3 verse 29. 
Verse 28, whether you're a man or woman, or whether you're educated or not, no matter who you are, God said, whoever can become my son, with inheritance, let's receive all the blessings. Let's become God's children and receive all the inheritance. We're here to receive this blessing. Amen. So no matter how much suffer, how much you've suffered up until now, are you weary? What, you have no reason to live and you wanted to commit suicide? You can still become blessed because you become a, a child of the greatest God. God said, if you change religions, it will not work because it's, it belongs to the devil. But Almighty God, only through His mystery, because we can become His sons, then we can receive it all as inheritance. Let's all receive this blessing to change this, change your destiny so that we can do better and better. Let's cry to the Lord three times and let's all go in Christ. From evil to that of child of God. That is That has to be first. Then, up until now, when it didn't work, it'll work. Your sickness will be healed. And the demons that were tormenting you will be cast out. You and your spouse will become one. Your children will be filial. You can be patriotic to the country. Let's cry to the Lord three times. Ready? Go. Chuyo! 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 Let us only go in Christ. So Almighty, Almighty God's sons, help us to become that. Father, we have lived so wrongly. We have lived so wrongly. Father God, thank you. Now that we realized we didn't know our past correctly, please forgive us because I didn't know correctly. We have tormented our children. Please help us to be forgiven, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Father God, we did not love our neighbors and that we have made fun of other people, that we have spat at other people. Please forgive us. Help us to be forgiven of all of this, Father God. At this time, this time, help this be the most blessed time of our life. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Forgiving Father, in Christ, you said that you will forgive all of our sins. Father, Ephesians 4, verse 32, your promise, we believe that. Father, because we didn't know that we spat at other people, we threw stones at other people. Father, now that we know that is my that was me. That was the problem within my own family. But before I knew it, I was, li I was living as, as crazy. Father, we have tormented you so much. Father, even now, Father, we confess our sins. Please forgive us. Father, this incredible promise, your Father, becoming your, your child in Christ. Father, as your child, help us to all receive all the inheritance. Father, according to your word, help us to do well. Help us to all become witnesses. Help us to show our neighbors, show them how well we can live as your witness. And help us to give benefit to our neighbors, Father. Help us to do better and better. Help us to receive that blessing. Help our children to become filial. Help us to receive that blessing. Help us to go to heaven surely. Li live a blessed life. Help us to receive this blessing. All this we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving and blessings. Amen.